Personas, Fade Apart 8. Who is it for? Intro. What's up, Creative Faces? I'm Ella from Creative Sound. Thanks for tuning in. So let's talk about the Fade Apart here. If we could remember what it looked like years ago, all the way up to this point, it's been through a few changes. And now we are here at the Fade Apart 8 and the Fade Apart 16. What is the difference between those two? Absolutely nothing. Actually, there is a difference. The, the 16 has eight more faders than it does on the 8. But as far as like the buttons and knobs and faders and just the overall, it's just eight eight faders difference that's it so who is this thing built for well it would be for the music mix engineer in the box mix engineer type person like myself this is just a midi device con controller so to speak there's no way to plug in mics or anything like that no headphones support anything it's just a controller which works really well by the way with studio one and of course it works with other dolls as long as it supports the huey protocol which means it will work with pro tools it will work with logic pro x it will also work with cubase i believe it will work with uh able to live and like i say anything that supports the huey protocol it will work with that there is also another mode that i noticed is it's midi which might be a bonus check it out see how that works for you so if we can just dive straight in just kind of look at it i'm i'm gonna do the best i can to explain I'm not gonna go in depth and detail as to how this thing works, but I'm just kind of show you like some basic stuff because there's a bunch of videos already right now out here on that. So basically, if we, if we could take a second and just kind of look at this thing, like the overall, you know, it's not really hard. It's, it's, it's very simple. I like how they they made everything. They try to put everything on here, controlling your your, your session and, and try to make make sure that you you stay focused on the sound versus you know. You, you have to go back and forth looking at the screen sometimes, but mostly everything you need to do if you're mixing a session is right here in front of you. All right, so like right quick, let me let me show you. So like, for instance, let me bring everything down. So if I just begin to start mixing, you know, I'm gonna just go ahead and increase the kick here. Let's go for the snare. Here's my hi-hat. Now, uh, check this out. Select it. Here's my pan right here. Let's go ahead and start panning. Let me get my master back up. And, and just, just like I just, what well, we just experienced it. Let me, let me bring that all down. This is actually pretty cool that I'm making these mistakes so you can kind of see a gist of what's going on I, early i was playing with the master fader and so when i press this button down it actually brings everything back up to unity gain depending on where you are and the same for the panning if, if i if i don't like the pan if i want to bring it back i could just click this is a cool feature i like that no second guessing so I'm bringing this time up some and I'm also like adjust the panning on it. Let's rewind. How about that? All right, so let's bring this the second time up. I'm going to control the pan right here. Select this one. And you don't need to select it in order to like move the fader, but you have to select it to control the panning because that's the only way you can dial it in on the actual track. I'm paying this a little bit further. I'm gonna hit bank. I'm gonna bank over and get my last two tracks, which is my overhead. I'm gonna bring that up. Now, because there's a pan button on here, I can hit pan and I can do this and be done with my panning. Like I just panned and, and, and 
my faders became the pan. Let's bring that back. The cool, th the other cool thing about this is I can hit shift track, and what happens is I have the time code. Now I can see where I am. So I'm at bar 81. I'm at beat one, 16th, and rim whatever that is that's that's the mil the milliseconds right that's that's cool so i'm doing everything i can see everything that i need to see from the led screens if i want to gain access to my sins there's my sin right there this is how much i have sent to you guys on this video and of course i told you about the panning if you have any plugins, you could definitely control the panning parameters from here. From what I know, you can only control the internal, which is Studio One. I have not yet seen a way to control the third party. I can be wrong. I can totally miss something, but this is kind of like my first look. So I can go between virtual instrument or audio. I love the way that it's organized here. So you could definitely have instruments in your track, your project, that is. And you can have audio and this is a way of organizing knowing you know which one is which because you know like me i have like instruments in between audio and just crazy so i can have them all up at, you know th this is pretty cool and if you want to see them all at once you can definitely hit all and as you can see everything is motorized so you can see the, the faders move as as we go also the cool thing about this is if if i need to adjust something in studio one you can kind of see it, it responds in real time as I control this knob in Studio One. So if I decide I want to like go ahead and, and make adjustments here, you will see it moving in Studio One. So the tight integration is real right here. If I wanted to, to control automation here on the, was that the first time? I need to display that. As you can see, I'm I'm writing to the track. Or I can hit latch. Turn it off. Or I can hit read, which is w what you would do in most cases. So let's scroll. Scroll to that. And let's see what it does as far as automation here. As you can see, everything is being controlled. If I need to undo that, hit shift, undo. See, all of this has been done from the control itself. If I want to zoom in, I can. If I need to scroll back and forth, I can. Or I can hit this rewind, backwards and forwards. You know? As it plays, it, it'll continue playing until I release. Same for if I scroll with the scroll wheel. If I want to drop markers here, hit markers, boom, there's a marker. This is something I do when I'm listening back to a song and I want to quickly identify the different sections without like, you know, <laughs> just think, you know, I could just do it this way, you know what I mean? Bam, another marker. All right, that's another section. And I can make my adjustments, adjustments, moving things back and forth, whatever. But it's, this is pretty cool how I can just quickly drop a marker on the control itself. 
right? If I have my loop or cycle selection, this is how I activate that. And of course, like like I said before, if you need to return back to something like uh, Unity Gain or the default area center or whatever, you just click on like if 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 I'm in panning, for instance, if I need to return back, I can just click on it and it returns it back. But that's not what I want to do. If I need to solo anything, you know, for whatever reason, and you know. You guys we get in these big sessions right and sometimes you, you you know especially when you putting things in folders and things like that it's like like wait where's everything you know hell here's a, the clear solo boom now we back you know everything is not nothing is solo at the moment same with mutes there's a dedicated button to clear clear the mutes say i want to mute the you know for whatever reason if I want to arm everything I can hit arm go one by one I can choose which one I want to arm you know click of the button however if say I didn't want to do that say I say like I'm doing drums I'm recording drums or there's a series of mics you know recording vocals that type of thing you want to do everything at once you just hit shift, arm everything, arm everything, and everything is activated. And everything is activated. Right? Cool feature. Now, just say, for instance, I wanted to get into, like, the plugins, you know. And like I say, I, I know you guys can't really see what's on my screen, but as soon as I hit plug-in on that selected track, so I have kick, right? It shows me kick right here, and then it shows me the, the the different plugins that i have loaded on this track so right now i have api the eq and the fat channel right now and let's control the eq now i can see what's going on and so now we get to play with what's going on as far as the eq um and basically this is you know it turns into a par parametric eq on your on your your fader here so you know, I could definitely turn all of this off and or I could just turn it back on and then I can make my adjustments here. So say I solo the kick, which by the way, you can solo it even from here, which is pretty cool. pretty cool stuff right get out of there go back to track right let's check out fat channel fat channel works a little bit different because up here you can turn on like the different pages like high pass filter your compressor eq and i guess it just depends where you are and what you have loaded which gives you different parameters get out of there all right so that's all i could think of to show you guys it's very simple i like it it's pretty cool like i say it's very tight integration with studio one personas did a good job with this thing i think i think it's pretty cool also the cool thing about this is they gave you guys options so if you are digging the eight or the 16 which is cool and then the, the, the new one that's coming out the io station and then if if those two items are too big you can always revert back to the single unit the, the one channel fader port and you can do some of the same things you just only have one fader 
but that fader turns you already saw the fader turns into several things and you can use it and do amazing things even with that so if you're digging any of these units you can definitely visit the description area of this video and just see which one works best for you if you have any questions of course let me know again my name is ella from creative sound remember music is art you the artist paint your picture stay creative without rules